before we proceed, uh, can I just determine which of the members are all present? I see a member from the West Asian, member America, member Maseku, uh, member Mbimbi. Are you present at the meeting? Yeah, I'm in the meeting. Thank you, Member Maseku. Member America? Uh, Member America, are you present at the meeting? Sir, so, Johan, your voice is a little bit soft. Uh, if you can try to come closer to your mic. I'll see. Is that better, Remember Maseko? Yeah, it's better yeah. now. A little yeah. bit better. Are you on? Yes, uh, sir. I, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, can, I, can we start? Uh, we, we can start. I just want to determine, Member van der Weesthuizen, are you, you present at the meeting? Thank you. I'm online and online. I'm hearing you well. Uh, member Mvimbi? Right. Um, members, we, we do have a, a quorum. And, uh, 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 we, excuse sorry. Uh, can yes, I also sir. register my presence as member always? Uh, we we will we will get to that uh, just now. Um, uh, members, we we are have, we do have a quorum. Um, due to the change in the Democratic Alliance membership on the Standing Committee on Transport and Public Works, uh, the committee will now proceed to the election of a chairperson or a new chairperson for the committee. Members, uh, may I ask for a nomination for, as chairperson for the standing committee? I see uh, Honourable Member van der Westeisen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kutsier. Mr. Kutsier, it's my pleasure to nominate uh, Honourable Derek America as chairperson of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, any other nominations? Uh, see that there is, uh, I see the hand of Member Maseku. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Kutsier. I second the nomination, or I'm in support of the nomination of Member America. Thank you so much. Uh, in, in the absence of any other nominations, uh, congratulations, Member America, you're duly uh, elected as chairperson of the standing committee, and I hand over the chair to proceed with the rest of the main meeting. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Kutsi, and um, thank you, um, colleagues, for um, entrusting your faith in me to um, be the chairperson of this uh, standing committee. Um, a hearty welcome to all members present. And um, just for the record, um, can the members once again, and I know that there has been a change, we have a new member on the committee, and that is Honorable Maseku um, and Honorable Sean August. Uh, to those new members, um, a hearty welcome to the Standing Committee on Transport and Public Works. And I am certain that your uh, membership of this committee will um, bring valuable insights into the work that, that this committee is entrusted with and that your contributions will be uh, forever highly valued and appreciated. With that said, colleagues, um, can I formally, um, you know, for our guest that's on the platform that is not um, 
familiar with um, the members of the committee. My name is Derek America, and I was now duly elected as chairperson of the standing committee. Um, can I ask the other members to introduce themselves, please? Thank you very much, Chairperson, and congratulations. Um, I know we are in good hands. My name is Matlodi Maseko, and I am a member of the committee. Thank you, Chair, and you've already heard my voice. Andrikas van der Westhuizen, member of the committee. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Sean August, a member of the committee. Any other members present? I um, have observed that Honorable Mbimbi was in the lobby. I don't know if he had been admitted yet. But uh, nonetheless, colleagues, um, as more members join the uh, meeting, um, we will um, ask them to introduce themselves or welcome them formally into the committee proceedings. Um, Johan, um, do we have any apologies? Um, Chairperson, no, I have not received any apologies except from uh, the National Minister Mbalula, uh, but I, it, you will most probably submit that apologies in the course of the meeting. Fine, thank you. Um, that's noted. Um, so, um, colleagues, uh, without um, you know going through all the um, sort of uh, protocols for us um, engaging on a virtual platform, allow me just to um, remind members of the. Um, basic, um, you, know, uh, you know, sort of protocol that if a member wishes to participate, is to indicate that um, I'm designed to participate by using the raise hand function. We have IT, uh, IT staff on the platform. If any member is um, experiencing technical difficulties, um, Siraj and Candice uh, are on standby to provide such assistance. Um, and all speakers will be muted. And if a member participates in the meeting, uh, such a member wish, um, could, if he or she wish, wishes to um, switch on the camera and obviously their mics as, as well. And then lastly, um, colleagues, unfortunately, we do not have translation services available, uh, but if um, there's a need for uh, a member to speak in a, one of the three official languages and um, we have able colleagues and staff that will assist with the translation in that regard. Um, this is a public meeting. It will be live stream live uh, on YouTube, and it is available for uh, for the public to view our proceedings. So today's agenda um, is basically one is that we um, will receive an update from Prasa on the rail services Sorry, in the Western Cape. And so uh, I'm sorry about that. I've been seeing the hands of Mr. Vermeulen and Mr. Kutier. They are trying to get your attention. I'm sorry about interjecting. My apologies. Okay, then just, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Honorable um, Seku. Mr. Vermeulen, uh, Mr. Kutier. Chairperson, yes, um, it's it's just for, for record purposes. Um, Mr. August, from the good party indicated that uh, he is present and a member of the committee. The, his membership has not yet ATC in, uh, in on the ATC. Uh, he is very welcome to the meeting. However, I will minute at him at this meeting that he was an alternate member. Um, 
just until such time as the membership has been formally tabled. All good. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kutsi. Um, Mr. August, uh, I'm sure you wouldn't have a problem with that. Honorable August? No problem. Right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jan van Meerlen, uh, is it the same? Yeah. Dear President, thank you very Good. much. Um, but I'm not going to waste time. I wanted to say the same thing that um, Johannes mentioned, just to ensure that uh, everybody understands procedurally. It will be um, jotted down as an additional member, not an uh, alternate member, but additional for now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Now that been sorted. Um, let me get back to <laughs> where we were the last time. Um, the agenda is uh, um, one we will receive this afternoon, an update from PRASA on the rail service and turnaround strategy in the Western Cape. And thereafter, we will deal with some committee administration. Allow me to welcome the Minister uh, of um, Transport and Public Works in the Western Cape, Mr. Daly Mitchell, um, to the meeting, as well as the HD, Ms. Jackie Gooch, and um, I think Mr. Faisal Williams is also on the platform. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to ask um, just the Minister if he wish to make a, a remark or two, um, and as we will um, proceed with the presentation. Um, I will um, then um, ask um, Prasa to introduce the uh, participants. But let us just start with the Minister first and um, inquire whether Minister Mitchell has an opening remark or two. Or um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Allow me an opportunity to congratulate you on your election as the chair of the committee. I look forward to working with you um, in your and the committee's role um, of keeping this department accountable and for um, in your oversight role. Uh, chair, um, I, I'm, I don't have any opening remarks other than to say that I think this is a very important agenda item. Um, and I, th I think in the interest of the, the citizens of this province, um, to get an update from PRASA where we are standing at, or where we're standing with the, the, in this process. I just want to, to the record state that my department and PRASA has been actively working together to try and see how best we can resolve um, this situation um, because ultimately we are all um, eager to make sure that we get the central line up and running. Thank you, Chair. You are on mute, Chair. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Ms. Gooch, is there any opening remarks you would like to make, if any? Good afternoon, Chair, and if I may echo the, the Minister's words and congratulations as, as being elected the Chairperson for this committee. If I may say good afternoon to you and to the Honourable Members and the uh, new member of the Transport and Public Works Committee, Honourable Member August. Um, I, I certainly am looking forward to also working uh, with the committee. As Minister Mitchell indicated, uh, we have and do work well with PROWS to try and provide as much support and assistance as we can and uh, are certainly open to continue with that partnership given the importance that the rail system plays not only within the city of Cape Town but more broadly across the western province. Thank you very much Chair. Thank you so much uh, Ms. Gooch. Um, right, um, so um, colleagues, we will now um, proceed to the second item on the agenda, and that is um, the um, presentation um, of PRASA. 
and allow me to welcome if um, the chairperson of the board is online, Mr. Leonard Ramatlakana, um, and also the acting group CEO, Mr. David Pelu, um, into the meeting. And I'm sure, I don't know, Ms. I saw Mr. Pelu is on the platform. Um, he is obviously the leader if the chairperson is not present of process of delegation and I'll, I'll hand it over to um, Mr. Mpelo to introduce um, um, the officials who will be participating in the meeting. I see they brought out posse of officials along um, and then um, we can uh, commence with the presentation. Welcome, Mr. Mpelo. I'll hand over to you and um, we can take it from there. Good afternoon, uh, Chair, and good afternoon to the honorable members. Um, just before I, I, I carry on, maybe uh, to say I will switch on the video briefly so you can see who's presenting from our end. I'm sitting in the Cape Town office and also apologize for the background noise that you can hear. We are in a building next to the stations where, where we, we're developing the station at the moment. So apologies for that, honorable members. Let me also acknowledge um, the MEC of transport in the province, the HOD as well. I know we work very well together and it's such an honor all the time to get your support. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, the, 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 the officials from the department as well, Depart National Department of Transport. Um, and with me, uh, Chair, I've got uh, my whole exco behind me uh, in the meeting. And if I can read out their names and their portfolios or functions quickly for the honorable members and the committee members to know who's in this meeting with me today. I've got the head of security, uh, Mr. Alexio Papadopoulos. I've got the head of strategy, Anna Marie Leba. I've got the CEO, the acting CEO of our property portfolio, Annette Lindeke. I've got uh, our head of communications, Barnendo. I've got our economics, uh, uh, Mr. Chris Litter. And I've got uh, with us as well, the head of our risk, who is uh, Mr. Joseph Makoro. Uh, we've got with us the CEO of Autopex, Mr. Neil Rouge. I've got uh, the head of the, the, the office I, I run, which is Mr. Nakane, uh, the spokesperson, uh, Andy Swamakanda, um, and I've seen the, the head of uh, our HR, uh, Mrs. Nontantra Kondowe. Uh, if I have not read out any anybody else and I've missed out, uh, I apologize and uh, protocol observed. I'm going to switch off the video for now so that we can have enough bandwidth to present, Chair, if you allow us to do that. But it's, it's an honor always to come before the committee and, and give you the progress as far as uh, PRASA is concerned and how far we've gone to date. Thank you, Mr. Mpele. You're most welcome. Um, and welcome to all the officials that you've introduced to us. Um, and. Um, I don't know who's going to flight the presentation uh, from your side or from our side. Um, you can just guide us in that regard, please. Kahiso, uh, can you fly the, the, the presentation from your end? Is it possible? Kahiso. Thank you. Honorable Chair, 
if I may start, uh, I'm sitting with uh, Mr. Kaparu Mulefe, who I've not introduced, who is the acting head of the Western Cape region at the moment, sitting with me in the Cape Town office. Uh, but before I give him the reins to, to, to present uh, the, the, the Western Cape portfolio in terms of what we're going to cover, let me just give a highlight, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, on the three areas we'd like to cover today. The first part is the current rail operations, which we'll be looking at uh, the comparison, basically where we are, how we're performing against that, and some of the challenges that we, we're encountering, including the security and how far we are with the security component. Obviously, because uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, the challenges that we have within the rail space at the moment has got a huge link within the security, security space. Part B is the central line, which you know has been a big, big, big challenge and has had a huge focus on that. And there's a whole program that's looking at recovering central line. And the, the, the process itself, we need to look at how far we are with that. Uh, it's a program that involves uh, multiple uh, departments and areas. So we'd like to at least give a, an update in terms of how far we are with, with the activities associated with each of the, the role players in that space. And the last one will be the station developments itself, looking at where we are with the Cape Town station. Uh, as I indicated earlier on, we're sitting in a building next to that and you can hear the noises in the background. And then the rest of the other stations associated with the other corridors that we're busy recovering. So without a delay, uh, Honorable Chair, if you allow me, I'll then give the reins to Mr. Mulefe, who is going to present the, the, all these three areas to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mpela. Uh, could, could I just ask that we put the presentation in presentation mode, so that it's a little bit bigger, uh, and then uh, we're ready to go. Okay, so are you are you presenting? Can you please do that as per the request from the honourable chair? Yes, GC, I'm I'm doing that. Thank you. Let's let's carry on. Okay, thank you, Grupsio. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable chair and honorable members of the standing committee. Um, good afternoon, also the officials in the province, as well as the brass officials in the in the meeting. But also, um, uh, good afternoon, also to the to the MEC uh, in the meeting. Um, I think as the groups you have indicated, uh, we're going to cover the three areas in the presentation um, uh, that talks to the, the current rail operation, where we are with it, but also the central line recovery and the relocation program, but also just the indication on the work that we are doing with development on the stations. I think it's also important uh, to also uh, illustrate and show that, that point. I think the first slide, I don't know if it's appearing uh, on your side. Sorry, that look like. uh, my apology, Mr. Malimi. Um, could, could you possibly uh, enlarge um, your, your, your screen? Because it, it is, I don't think it's in presentation mode. Um, so that we, we, we could see a little bit clearer. If you don't mind, if it's possible. So you're battling with the technology then? Yes, GC, I'm, I'm trying to put it on the presentation mode. It's not responding the site.
Chair. Honorable Seku, sir, I recognize you, sorry. Thank you very much. Chair, can we ask um, Mr. Kuzi, maybe if he has a presentation to assist them, they will communicate with him as they want him to change the, the slides if they are finding it difficult to, to operate okay. from. Uh, um, uh, from the Vesa, is it? Are we on the same Are you on the same point? Yes, thank you, Chair. I don't know if it's already in presentation mode. Perhaps if we could just then be allowed, you know, a little bit more time to try and read it. Is, it is quite small, the text there, but it may be already in presentation mode. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I, thank you. Um, what... Um, Possibly, um, Johan, just uh, because I, what I, sorry, uh, I see Ms. Gooch, um, I acknowledge you. Through you, Chair, I was going to offer to, I've got the presentation that the uh, Secretariat sent through earlier today, so I was going to offer to, to present it if you, to just run it off my machine, if it would help. Yeah, no, I, I, the, the one that I received today was uh, slightly a bit different to the one that uh, we, we right. see on the screen. And I would But, um, yeah, uh, if, uh, if we can proceed in this way, members do have um, difficulty. If it's exactly the same presentation, certainly we can do it that way. Um, Johan, can you just guide me here? Um, the presentation that you sent out this morning uh, doesn't appear to be exactly the same presentation that's on the that screen there today. Maybe there's been some changes to it or additions. Chairperson, yes, I. Uh, that's the the one that you've got is the one that I have. Uh, I haven't received any amended presentations, so then it might be better for them to to flight the presentation. Otherwise, I could call it up on from my side. But I got a feeling it's already in presentation mode, and it's just a little bit small. Okay, okay. Let, let's just proceed it in this way, um, because all members received the presentation, and I'm sure they can uh, make reference to it if um, they need to be any sort of questions of clarity. So there may be some changes to the presentation, and so I will allow Mr. Malemi to continue, and should we have difficulty um, with uh, aspects of the presentation, then we can raise it. Okay, Mr. Malemi, I'm so sorry to have interrupted your, um, your, uh, your presentation. Um, it's much better now, certainly. Um, you may proceed. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me carry on. I think the first part that you wanted to start with on the is Jerry to compare uh, the kind of train service, uh, train trips that we're making in June 2019 uh, compared to where we are in February 2022. It's important because uh, at that time when you're running 52 trains, uh, this is, will be the highest uh, uh, train service that we're running in that in that period. This is the the target that we want to achieve first um, uh, before we move to the to the target uh, that we're going to set. Now, if you look at this slide, it says that uh, we're running about 444 uh, train trips uh, in in June 2019 on all the 13 lines in the Western Cape that we are running on. Uh, just before lockdown uh, last year, uh, in 2020, we, we went down to 270 train trips. We are now sitting uh, uh, in February on 153 train trips. Obviously, it shows that uh, we, are, we are quite, uh, uh, low, on, uh, quite be, uh, low on the train trips that we need to run, and then we're probably going to have to, uh, to increase. The primary reason you can look in the slide, if you look at the red, uh, the Strand Esther River line number three, which is line to, uh, to to Strand, we're not running trains on that on that section of the line, but we're also not running trains in the in the in the in the in the central line, uh, but we're also not running trains in the Sarepta 
um, uh, portion of the of the central line. But you also know that we're not running trains on the main line uh, to Belleville between Mutual. Uh, the train service is not running there. As a result, uh, there are a number of areas uh, that we currently not running trains. There are the corridors that we are not we are not operational. But the, as a as a as a target, we we are tracking that we must get to uh, and exceed the 444 uh, train trips that we are making in the uh, in in June 2019. And um, we can move to the second slide, which shows which corridors are we operating on. Um, um, uh, uh, we can move to the next slide. This slide really um, give you the, the Western Cape regional map uh, in terms of all the corridors that we are running. Um, the red at the bottom is the southern line, uh, with the brown being the Cape Flats part of the southern line area. If you look at the blue, uh, is the central line. And then the top there, you, you, it's your north up to Worcester. But the, on the amber line, um, uh, the amber and the numbered uh, uh, lines, you can see that the, we've got a total of 10 uh, lines in the Western Cape on the three corridors that we are operating. We're currently operating on the six, uh, six, uh, six lines. We're running service from Cape Town to Salmon's Town um, uh, at the moment. We're also running, uh, which is number one on the line. If you look at the at number one at the bottom, uh, where the, the number one is, uh, that's where the southern line uh, to Samuels Town runs. We, we're also running uh, the Cape Flats line via Ethlow uh, to Heathfield, and that connect to the southern line to, uh, to, to Samuels Town. That is number two that is there. Um, uh, the number two, we're currently running service on, on that section of the line. Um, if you go to the top chair on the, on the Century City line, Monte Vista to Belleville, we're running service on that uh, on that on that line uh, to Belleville, and that service goes all the way up to um, um, uh, uh, Wellington and and to Worcester. We're running a, a shuttle service uh, to uh, number six. So we also running um, uh, on on number five, which is the Mamasbury line. Uh, we're running a service to Mamasbury, but it's just a shuttle service. We're running the morning. We're not running the off peak but we also run in the afternoon peaks uh, service in that, in that section of the line. So, uh, but there are three, there are areas. We're not running Cape Town, Langa, via Pinelands currently, which is number seven on the, on the map. We're not running on that section of the line. We're also not running on Cape Town, Belleville, via Lavistown, uh, which is number eight on the map that you see there. Uh, we were not running on that section of the line. We're also not running on the Cape Town, on the Langa to Nyanga, uh, which is uh, number nine on the map. Uh, we're not running on that section of the line. But we're also not running on the Cape Town to Belleville via Goodwood, as I mentioned, which is number 10 on the line. So uh, as a summary, uh, we're running six lines in the Western Cape. We're not running on, on 10, on the four lines uh, to make the total line. So so this is the, the current... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, resumption, uh, what do you call uh, service that we're running in the in the in the Western Cape. I think it's important that we we indicate those because the resumption plan must then talk to uh, when are these other lines going to come, which are which are not running, which we'll talk to just now. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we we really wanted to just show the train service uh, in terms of uh, the current service performance where we are operating, and ideally is going to be. Uh, the section in the southern line where we're running currently, also the 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 the, cent the central line up to Langa, we're running a, a shuttle a service up to Langa, but we also run into north. So we're going to look at the the current performance over the over the, the three months from November, uh, December, and January on those three on on the, on the three services. On this on this slide, you see three uh, four tables. It talks to the morning peak. It also talks to the afternoon peak the off-peak series, but then we roll it out. I'm going to concentrate on the roll-up because it then indicates uh, what has been the performance of the service over the last three months from November uh, to, to January 2022. If you look at the, at the, at the roll-up, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the table on your, on, on your extreme right in the middle, you show that we have a, a running a train service schedule, which is the train trips that we have scheduled. Uh, around 1,246 in November, which move, uh, which remained the same in December, but we increased those uh, those schedules in in January uh, to 1,708. 
of that schedule, we have been, we've, we've run a cancellation of, a, of 207 trains in January, and then we have delayed 334, and then we're running a cancellation of 12.1%. At the moment, if you look at the percentage of the cancellations and the percentage of the uh, punctuality of our service, you'll see that uh, we have uh, improved the, uh, the, cancel the cancellation from 36.1% in November 2021 we're currently sitting at 12.1% in January 2022. And when you look at the punctuality, which is the, the trains, the, tire, the, 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 uh, the, the, the train service punctuality, you'll see that uh, in November 2021, we're sitting at 24.7%. We have now improved that to 77.7% uh, in January 2022. So it, this slide really it demonstrates that uh, uh, there is an improvement in the performance of the service but also, uh, deter, uh, what you call it, we, our performance also undermined the, the cancellations, which is going down uh, in, in the way that it should, as well as the, uh, what you call the, uh, the punctuality of our service. Um, the, the, if, if you look at the November, uh, we had the major problems as well in Falls Bay, uh, which we have since uh, resolved. You can see that the percentage was quite low. But we are encouraged, Chair um, uh, and honored members, in the fact that the uh, our, our cancellations are going down uh, and our, our, our punctuality is also uh, growing uh, in the southern line. Um, and then we'll talk to uh, some of the initiatives that we have in that, in that area. That, that was the, the, the southern line uh, train performance. Um, the next slide really talk to uh, uh, the, the Langa. We're only running uh, in the central line, we're running the train service up to Langa. Um, 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 and not the rest of the network for reasons that we, we already have uh, we have discussed. But I think that that service, uh, if you you could see that the, uh, because we we actually run two trains in the in that section uh, via mutual, you can see that the percentages of the cancellation as well as the percentage of punctuality are sitting at the at the 96% for January. It was 98% in November, and then and 99%. So we we're, we're running really the a different kind of service, and we don't have uh, too many challenges given the fact that uh, we're running two trains in that section, and we're not delaying many of those trains, and we're not cancelling those trains. So ideally, that's where the, 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 that performance is. I don't want to over-elaborate on the central line because we're going to talk about what happened to the rest of the, of the, of the service in the central line. We can move to the next, um, uh, to the next uh, slide, which talks to the service performance on the Northern Corridor, uh, which is our Bellevue line to Worcester, as well as to Mamasbury, uh, and then that service run via Bellevue. Uh, we can talk to, to, uh, to that performance uh, in that regard. So it, on this slide, in the same way as the other two slides that has passed, you look at the roll-up, you can see that the, um, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the, the performance between November to January, you see that we have, we have, we have gone down to 30%. Uh, uh, what you call in terms of the cancellations, uh, we, we go in the right uh, from 43% to 50% in December, but we're now sitting at 30%. Uh, punctuality has uh, grown uh, slightly to 68% uh, uh, in January. And I think it, it may be also important to indicate that the majority of the service that we're running beyond, uh, uh, beyond Belleville, uh, we're running that service on the Transnet line. Um, and it, mostly to Worcester, uh, we have been experiencing a number of uh, uh, interruptions there in terms of vandalism uh, that Transnet have been uh, uh, dealing with, uh, including uh, even yesterday, the latest, uh, we have an uh, interruption in that section of the line. So we're in constant communication with Transnet uh, to also to improve the, what you call the availability of the signal, as well as the OETE in that section. But uh, the, really the the performance of the northern line is sitting at 78%, uh, 68%, uh, which is 68.5% in January, and then we got improvement that uh, we have to make in that in that in that regard. So we just need to demonstrate that uh, uh, at that point. But we also want to just indicate what are the three major reasons of uh, train delays uh, that we have been experiencing. I think uh, that will be in the next slide. Uh, we have a major delays on the signal um, uh, contribution. Um, uh, between Cape Town Station and Woodstock, uh, we, have, uh, we have experienced vandalism of a signal system in that area. Um, we, 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 we have just uh, yesterday, Grupsio, 
concluded a contract that is going to enable us uh, to recover the 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 uh, what the signal system between uh, Cape Town Station and Worcester, which will improve our what you call it, our 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 delays, uh, um, uh, our performance actually in that in that section. Um, in the main, a uh, cancellation is caused by payway, uh, and then the the delays are caused by the signal system in that regard. We also have a, a we receive space contract and rolling stock, so we are busy with the work to improve that. But uh, both the signal and the rolling stock has been causing a major uh, major uh, delays for us in the period that we're looking at. Um, and we also has indicated we're experiencing delays in Wellington and Dajosafat, as well as uh, towards Worcester on the on the Transnet line, uh, which the Transnet is busy is busy dealing with. Um, these are really the three major. Uh, areas uh, that cause delays, and we experience we are expecting that in the next month, uh, uh, having done the uh, the signal repairs between Woodstock and Cape Town Station, we should be able to see a significant improvement in our performance in, in that in that regard. We have uh, also three major reasons for the cancellations of our trains. Uh, obviously, at the top is the the, the issues around uh, uh, OHT cable that are stolen, the Transnet line, uh, that TFR. So. Between Cryfontaine and Worcester, we have experienced major vandalism there, and Transnet is busy with process of repairing some of those lines. But you have also have noted that uh, in in Fishu, uh, towards uh, someone's town, uh, we have experienced uh, uh, some sand on the. There's been uh, major winds in the Western Cape, which have caused the uh, the sand on the uh, on the railway uh, on the railway track to an extent that we are not being able to run trains. Uh, in that in that section of the line, so we are busy with two processes here uh, to to sustain and remove the sand, but also to look at the permanent solution uh, to resolve that problem in in Fishhook um, in towards someone's town. So we we're busy with that process, but the, the, really the 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 other one uh, which was major it was the the issue in Wanbe that has to do with the uh, the vandalism of the uh, electrical supply. Which have caused the uh, what you call the flooding of the subway, uh, as uh, both the city of Cape Town electrical installation, but also uh, Prasa installation station was uh, uh, extensively vandalized, and the city is busy uh, to resolve that. So those have been the major of vandalism uh, for the period of January 2022 that we have experienced. Next slide. The next slide uh, uh, talks to the, uh, the the stats around the uh, uh, crime stats. Um, uh, if you look, we have we have been keeping the uh, what you call. Can we move to the next slide? We have been keeping the records of uh, our our crime stats um, from uh, December 2020 until March. Uh, what you call? Let's call it February 2022. Um, we have a number of categories of crimes uh, in that in in that regard. Uh, the first one being really issues around malicious damage to property. Uh, you can see that the. The number of February sitting uh, currently at three incidents, and then we've been coming from 26 and 14. So there's been a significant number of incidents that uh, pertains to vandalism of property uh, in that regard. But we also have been experiencing incident of overhead cable theft, um, which has been uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 currently we're sitting at two. Uh, it shows that uh, there's work that security is doing because these incidents, you can see, they are going down. Uh, in terms of the overhead uh, cable theft, uh, the signal cables as well, we're experiencing um, uh, cables of that. The, 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 the data talks to the, to the number of incidents uh, that pertains to the vandalism of signal cable. Uh, we have been experiencing some of the theft on the rolling stock, um, uh, uh, rolling stock cables uh, the, on the trains. Uh, that is a little bit lower. We, uh, for the last three months, we have been having one incident in that regard. Uh, so in that aspect, you can also see that those incidents are beginning to, to come down. But also the general theft of our property, our, our asset, our, uh, you can see that the, uh, those are coming, are coming down. Uh, in December 2020, we're sitting on 64 total number of incidents. Uh, and in January, we're sitting at 26. Uh, the security efforts are beginning to also, uh, what you call, give, uh, give us an indication that the uh, the work that they've been done in in that in that respect um, uh, in that in that aspect. So the next slide, which is this, uh, just illustrate that point. I don't think we must talk to that uh, because it also talks to the to the point that I make. This slide shows the 
uh, the, the successes, the, which is the arrest. Uh, I think you can go to the, first, the slide before this one. Uh, this slide talks to the, the successes of the security arrest that have been made over a period of time, uh, starting from one incident in December 2020 uh, to uh, number nine incident that we are experiencing now. So this really just showed uh, uh, what are the, the arrests that have been made uh, in so far as the incident that I've talked about of concern. So uh, uh, you can see that uh, at least uh, there is a, a significant improvement in number of arrests for incidents that we have uh, we have been experiencing in our operation. I think uh, the before we move to the uh, group or before we move to the uh, to the central line, we must also indicate that we uh, we have received uh, an approval from RSR. It's good news for us, uh, uh, honourable chair, uh, that. Um, we have been running new trains on a test pilot in the Western Cape. Um, we currently have 12 new trains that are at Paran Island at our depot. Uh, we have been uh, testing these trains on an off-peak service. Um, uh, on the 21st, which is uh, two days ago, uh, RSR has approved, give us approval and permit uh, to run full commercial service on these trains uh, in the South Line and Cape Flats Line. So you'll probably be seeing as a group CEO and honorable chair bring more of the of the of the blue train, new trains in that section of the of the line. We are excited about uh, this uh, uh, because we have seen how this uh, uh, new train service uh, or new trains are being received in the Western Cape. Uh, and then I think this is something that we are we are excited about, and we're looking forward to introduce more of these trains in that section of the line. Um, then we can move to the uh, to the central line. Okay, the the central line recovery plan is categorized into four categories, uh, or let's call it two phases, uh, uh, for us to be able to realize that the, the central line uh, 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 program. You will call that the uh, the central line uh, uh, as we understand it started longer. It connect the pilots, but also connect mutual, and then it moves to Belleville uh, via Univel and Sarepta uh, Lavistown, uh, but also to Kaikik uh, uh, Kailisha Captain Slip and Michel's Plain and and Krishan in Kali. That, that is really, in a nutshell, what the central line for us look like. Um, there are a number of uh, uh, projects that we want to bring on board in a phase approach to bring the central line. In service, the first thing is that we want to connect the the pilots to Langa. Um, um, there is an OHT work that needs to be done there. Uh, Group CEO, we have given you that this should come the first week in March. Um, but I think uh, I must say uh, to be in this meeting uh, as recorded uh, that we experiencing delay on this is probably going to come a, a week after this uh, after this week. So, but it could be that uh, the plan was that we must bring the the pilots through. Uh, connecting to Langa to, to, to Langa Station uh, first week in March, which will now be a second week after uh, uh, um, um, the second week in March. The second phase, which is really phase 1B of the central line, is really to, you know, central line connects to Belleville uh, via the Goodwood. We, we brought the Goodwood uh, line, which is the main line in the north, uh, to run trains from Mutual uh, via Pero to, uh, to Belleville, and then come through to Langa via um, the, the central line. So the, that line, uh, we're going to bring it back uh, Group CEO, in the first week in March. We are on course for that. Uh, the OHT work that we're busy with is completed this week, and then we'll be running trains uh, from next week in the test uh, format. On the first week, on the 7th of March, we will be running the trains in the in the Goodwood uh, to Belvin. The, the, the other section, which is phase 1C, uh, really it talks to the Langa to Nyanga, the section uh, that ran from Langa, uh, we're talking Netrer, Bonteville, Heidefeld uh, to Nyanga. That section is phase one uh, C of our work. But also uh, the stations from uh, Lavistown, uh, Monte, uh, Lavistown, uh, Bella, Unibel to Belleville, that's uh, phase one C, uh, which is really the, the entry of the central line. Uh, that section we're going to run that in July, end of July, uh, we are busy with work now. Uh, we've got the squatters uh, or settlement that uh, that is in in Langa uh, Langa Station. 
And I think I must say, Group CEO, we have made the decision uh, on the on this section. Uh, we are working with the city of Cape Town. We're working with the provincial government, HDA, Human Settlement, uh, to remove the settlement in, in Langa. We have a court order uh, that runs to uh, the end of July. We have taken a decision as Prasa, whether with or without the, what you call, with settlement moving, we, we will be running trains in, the, in, in Langa, uh, what you call it, in, in July. So that's the decision that we have taken. We're implementing interim measures uh, currently uh, to give effect to that, kind, that decision that we have made. I think that's important also to know uh, that end July, 2022, we'll be running a uh, train service from Langa to Nyanga, but also from Langa uh, to Belleville via, via Sarepta and Unibel. Then the last phase uh, of the central line, which is now moved to complete the entire section, uh, which we run into Grisani uh, in Kailicha and Captain Slip in Mitchell's Play. Uh, there is a, there is a, the, the, the situation, Philippe, requires a little bit, lot of work of us to do. Uh, um, uh, in that in that relocation, uh, the, the the target is that we must run that section by end of December 2022. So, in a nutshell, uh, this is what the the central line uh, recovery uh, timelines look like uh, with the work that is associated to be done in that in that area. Now, to give uh, uh, the relocation program in effect, uh, there is an implementation protocol that we we are busy in circulation. I must thank the. Uh, the Western Cape Provincial Department of Transport. Um, uh, uh, they have already signed uh, the IP, which uh, which 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 give us a a, a, a government cooperative uh, arrangement to deliver the relocation program. But also the Provincial Department of Human Settlement in the Western Cape they have signed on the IP. Uh, but uh, the other department have signed. Transport they have signed. Uh, department of Human Settlement they have signed, and also Department of Public Works and Infrastructure have signed. The IP is really now at the, at the, at the city of Cape Town. Uh, we're expecting that the city of Cape Town is considering it, and then in, in due course, they'll then uh, be signing the IP. Uh, once the IP has been signed by the city of Cape Town, it must be signed by HDA, uh, which is the implementing agent for the relocation program, but also PRASA also need to sign in the IP. So once the IP is signed, at least it then give effect to roles and responsibility in the relocation program, which is really the next slide, um, uh, which talks to uh, who is supposed to be doing what uh, to get the, uh, what do you call it, the relocation program uh, taking place. Uh, I can see, Honorable Chair, the slide is very busy, uh, but I think uh, it is in the, in the, in the, in the uh, what do you call in the presentation, and I think we should be able to, to talk to, uh, what to Honorable Members to be able to see those slides. Uh, in this case, I think uh, it, it has all these uh, role players who are signatory to the IP and the, and the associated responsibilities uh, from funding uh, to uh, servicing the land uh, to finding the land parcels that are going to be, uh, what do you call, that are going to affect the relocation uh, to, uh, to PRASA having to re reinstate and build the infrastructure signal OHTE works in the central line, uh, also to the city of Cape Town, uh, looking uh, at the at the servicing of those those parcels of land. So this is really a package of uh, responsibilities and uh, the necessary accounting uh, officers on those entities have signed and are signing uh, this IP so that we can be able to uh, to run the uh, what you call it uh, uh, this program of relocation in a way that is more efficient um, in that. But I think we must also look at the, where we sit in because the biggest uh, problem uh, of the relocation has always been the issue of land. I think, uh, and linked to that has been the funding uh, aspect, which is the next slide. Uh, I must say, um, it, it will have been known that uh, uh, in, the, in the early days, in the beginning, uh, PRASA approached the Department of Public Works uh, as a custodian of state land uh, to allocate portions of land uh, for the relocation purpose of the central line, uh, we got two parcels of land, uh, which we we ran into 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 troubles uh, with the receiving community um, in in that regard. Um, and then, as a result, we had to go to court and ask for uh, extension of the of the order of the court order, uh, which now we have for the end of July uh, 2022. Um, and then to allow us to be able to 
have more consultation with the with the receiving community. But in that process, we we then look at the alternative parcels of land, um, and then we found two portions of land in Philippi, as well as one in Makasa, which were outside Kalichi, which were completely excessively overpriced. Uh, we then asked the Minister of Women Settlement uh, to follow expropriation process uh, for these portions of land, so that we can pay market value uh, for 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 this portion of land, which is the process that currently sitting at the at the Minister of Women Settlement, uh, being facilitated by HDA, but. Uh, while we're also looking at that, uh, we are aware that the HDA, on behalf of the Western K provincial government, uh, initially started negotiations on number of parcels of land in the wedge area in Philippi. Uh, there were five parcels of land that already have been negotiated. Uh, I think those parcels of land were then released uh, from province and HDA for us to conclude our negotiations with them for the purpose of using those as a quick uh, win to to uh, uh, to resolve the. Uh, what the land questions in the central line. Uh, so we have now uh, completed negotiations with three, um, what you call the private landowners there. Uh, this week they are finalizing the two. And then once those the negotiations are completed, we'll then get the consent over those land. We are we are clear, Chair, these are the current portions of land where the prices that they've been asked and the valuation report that we have are very close to each other. And we may get uh, an agreement as quickly as possible and then to, to acquire these portions of land. Uh, those portions of land are, are in Philippi. And I think, uh, uh, Chair, if you look at the at the green uh, part on the on this slide, it talks to all those portions of land. Uh, it's 2.8 hectares, um, uh, remain of uh, farm 786, uh, but also 5.8 hectares in 790 um, uh, farm 790. So th these portions of land at the one that we are finalizing. We're expecting that uh, uh, this week uh, we should get the consent on this land so that we can be able to start the process uh, with the city of Cape Town uh, while we are finalizing uh, the final acquisition in terms of the of, 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 of settling and then uh, acquiring this, this land so that those processes can, can run parallel. If we get that, uh, we, we should be able to, uh, uh, to move on this on this portion of land so these are land that are giving us more like um, uh, uh, the benefit at this stage that we may be able uh, to uh, to meet the uh, our july 2022 uh, deadline but in order for us to do that there are a number of things that needs to be done uh, and i think we say in this in the next slide chair uh, just to indicate show the actions uh, that needs to take place uh, for us to be able to meet the uh, july 2022 deadline and be able to, what do you call it, to meet the the, the court date. Firstly, we must finalize this uh, uh, the land issues by end of this uh, end of, of this week. Which uh, at the last check with HDA, uh, we are going to uh, we are finalized that by end of this week. Uh, we will have that uh, that sorted out. And I'm aware that uh, even the the DG of Women Settlement is here tomorrow uh, to to sort of uh, give uh, what do you call it. Um, uh, uh, expeditious actions around meeting the end of February deadline on the on the land issues, but uh, as soon as we get the land issues, we then uh, have to get the the funding confirmation. We have been we have gone to Treasury to indicate to Treasury uh, the need to uh, to fund the acquisition of land for the purpose of the central line. In principle, Treasury agreed. They're just waiting for the funding to come through, uh, which will come through as soon as the. Uh, uh, we find an agreement this week. Uh, that process is also running um, uh, uh, in, in that regard. And then the, the third item is really that uh, as soon as we, we got the consent over those five portions of land, uh, we are going to be uh, engaging with the city of Cape Town to enable us uh, to access those land on the, on the emergency relocation purposes uh, for the purpose of, uh, of, of uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, establishing emergency relocation uh, in those sections of land, uh, and then we we will be discussing the city of Cape Town on on that aspect. The fourth thing is really completing the signing of the IP, um, um, which is the implementation protocol. We want that uh, to be signed, uh, completed by the end of February. Uh, currently, HDA uh, should not have an issue with that because uh, we and HDA, Brass and HDA, uh, through consultations with the uh, the other stakeholders, have produced that uh, that kind of document. Uh, as soon as the city of Cape Town have signed, uh, we will be in the position to 
uh, to complete that that process. But then uh, I think the the last thing is that uh, while we are going to resolve the uh, the the Philippi settlement, the focus and the resources we are giving it to to the phase one, which is the Langa uh, settlement, uh, which will enable us to run a decent train service if we are able to remove that uh, uh, what do you call it the settlement there. So these are some of the actions uh, that needs to take place. Uh, uh, to be able to meet those those deadlines in in that in that space. Now I think the last part, uh, 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 honourable chair, was really to show some of the the work that we're also doing on the stations. I don't want to spend a lot of time on on these ones, uh, but just to see that uh, in line with the uh, densification along the station next to the station, because the stations are our prime land areas, uh, we have been engaged in the process to develop. Uh, land parcels which is linked to the stations and then we have been running a number of processes. The one that you see here is the one that we have already signed agreements on them. The first one being really the Cape Town station. Uh, we are building a 7,000 square meter of retail at the Cape Town station uh, which is currently in construction. Uh, we're also building a student accommodation on one side of the station but also a hotel. Uh, I think the four-star hotel on the other side of the station the construction have started the 1st of August, uh, and I think it's moving fast. And then with the completion of the entire construction should be in November 2023. So this is really the work that is taking place uh, that uh, at the Cape Town station. And we are also excited about, about that work uh, because it's going to change the, uh, the face of our, our station. But we have also entered into uh, an agreement in Goodwood, which is the next one. Um, uh, next to Goodwood Station uh, to really uh, bring some social housing on the station. There is a 1,080 units that uh, uh, we, we are going to build there. Uh, we have entered into land lease uh, with a, a developer there uh, to build these units um, at the cost of 280 million. And we expect that this construction must go to site uh, in April. Um, first of April, uh, we expect that they must be able to, uh, to start uh, uh, showing uh, dust in, the, in that space. Uh, that will also uh, bring uh, these numbers there. The third one really is around Deep River. Uh, we be, we also busy with the residential development on Prasa Land in Deep River, uh, building affordable houses, there are about 200 units. Uh, the construction uh, is going to start in, in March 2022. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, all the uh, things that need to take place there, uh, they have taken place. So. We, 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 we are going to show a change in the Princeton Deep River Station, uh, which will improve, enhance the, the look and the feel of that, of that station. But also at Woodstock, we have two parcels of land at Woodstock right next to the station. Um, and and we, do, we have signed two agreements, uh, one uh, really on the Woodstock Gray and Market. Um, we are building 168 uh, units at the value of 149 million rand at that corner land. Um, uh, at Grayville and Market Street, um, uh, and then we, uh, that also is going to be, the, the, the very decent uh, development that is going to come, and that's, and we are also excited about that development. It will also enhance the, uh, our, our, our station. But just next to, in, uh, in the same road, uh, uh, next to the station, if we, you'll see that on the station, we have a very old buildings that we are bringing down. We'll be building 247 units of a, uh, of residential development there to a value of 23 million. Um, uh, that development is going to come through in that area. So this uh, development and the one that we just passed are almost in the same street um, uh, in, that, in, that, in that corner. So uh, we are changing how the, the Woodstock station look like. Uh, currently, we're also developing and upgrading the station itself uh, so that it can be able to respond the look and feel uh, to the development that's taking place uh, on that station. But if you on the six, we also the uh, the development uh, in Wood, in Goodwood next in the Elsis River. Uh, if you know where the uh, the Goodwood Court is, uh, Prasa have uh, open land there um, um, next to the bridge that goes into Elsis River. Uh, we have uh, we have a development that we a residential development that we have signed an agreement uh, there to uh, to a value of 380 million. Uh, we'll be building uh, about 936 units. Uh, of apartments in that in that in that space, uh, so th we we that also the work that is taking place uh, in that in that space. The last one is really uh, next to the Black River 
uh, here by uh, Fortigo Road in, in, in uh, Salt River, um, which is really what we're doing there is the industrial uh, units that we are building there. We have signed an agreement on, on those things. So, so this in a, in a nutshell, the uh, property developments along the station that we are bringing in. Uh, I must also say we also advertised uh, last week a number of uh, other areas, uh, which is really in the Unibel, uh, Pentec, as well as the Bella. Uh, mostly after our consultations with NEFSAS and the University of Cape Town, CPUT, as well as the uh, uh, University of Western Cape, uh, just to bring uh, student accommodation units uh, in, in, uh, on the stations. I think we have advertised those. Uh, those adverts will be closing on the 28th of March. And then we're looking forward for, for building student uh, housing and student accommodation uh, along those, the, those, those, those areas. Uh, so this really uh, talks to the totality of what we are doing in the Western Cape, both at the level of the rail service uh, in terms of recovering these lines, the central line, but also uh, a development around the, uh, on the stations. And Krupsio, thank you very much. I think that was the presentation that shared. Okay. Honorable Chair, Honorable America, um, MEC, Honorable Members, uh, I think in summary, if uh, you know, if you allow me to, to wrap up on the presentation, is that the, the route to recovery uh, has been painful, but it's starting to show some, some fruits out of that. The team has been hard at work. As you can see, we're getting there. Uh, yes, we still have... Be, have um, Tati, Tati, can you mute your mic, please? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. So the route to recovery, uh, in as much as it's been painful, Honorable Chair, is starting to show some fruits. I think in the province, uh, we, 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 we're seeing some successes, which is very encouraging. Uh, I must also hasten to, to highlight that in the, the investment that we've made in the new trains, uh, we've allocated 12 of those units into the province, and as we modernize the, the, the infrastructure, we're looking at utilizing those and bringing that uh, as part of the service to the people of the province. Uh, the crime stats, it's showing you that the integrated security plan that we've introduced is now starting to bear fruit as well. We do need a partnership with both the province and the entities of security. Uh, I must say that to the honorable members including the communities as well. We need to bring the communities uh, uh, closer to, to, to this service because they own the service so that we can then secure this going forward. MEC, uh, if you remember, we were together down uh, uh, opening the two new stations. We made promises and we're sticking to those promises in terms of opening the southern line and the northern line through Goodwood. And we're sticking to that and we've been hard at work with that and we'll invite you back MEC to, 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 to launch that with us. Uh, on the last part, which is our, our second mandate around assisting us to generate revenue and be able to, to sustain the entity, you can see we also are now impacting the, the communities on the socio-economic part. Uh, we, we're developing to make revenue, but we're also developing to create uh, a socio, socio impact on, on, on that part. Without uh, laboring that point, uh, Honorable Chair, I will close that presentation at, at that and, and open up for any questions for clarification any further. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mpelo, uh, and thank you, Mr. Mulemi, for the presentation. I'm going to open the floor for um, questions. I see the minister has indicated that you uh, now recognize the minister and Honorable Ms. Seku. Uh, minister, you good to go? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chair, I, I don't have a question. I just want to, on for the record and for the members, uh, interest the HOD had to unfortunately leave this meeting for another engagement, but the department with myself are still represented. Um, so if there's any questions to the department. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Minister. Um, it's noted. Um, Honourable Maseku and then Honourable Van der Vesa is in, in that order. Honourable Maseku. 
Um, thank you, thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm I'm going to switch off the video. I just want, and I I need to thank the 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 Prasa and the department, and the national and the provincial for every official that has honored us with their presence in the meeting to update us. And bear with me because we some of the members we just started today. It's our first day in the standing committees as the um, permanent members. So if you ask. If I ask a question that maybe you have so many times answered the other members, just um, indulge me and be patient with me. But I just want to find out, Chair, through you, um, what is the status of the rail enforcement? Because one of the, the, the challenges of the trains is the, 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 the security. So even if there is a trail that shows improvement, the rail enforcement that was previously funded by the Western Cape government and present city of Cape Town was a hope that um, it, it thinks they would be better in the security. So I want to find out if that is something that it will be relooked at. And maybe if also Prasa can indicate why was it stopped? And the, 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 the other one, it will be the visibility of the security inside the trains during the peak times on the, the lines that are now back in operations. If maybe they can indicate how are they attending to that. Um, and also the CCTV cameras in the depots and the stations. Is that everything is up to scratch where there's operation that they have upgraded that? And the other one, it will be chair. Maybe if we can get the indication of the land parcel of the Stellenbosch that um, Minister Delil said that he identified was identified by the passenger rail agency um, by Prasa and the HDA as an alternative land for the relocation of the resettlement. Um, for the central line, is it still in line or the Prasa have identified another land parcel where they are doing the social housing? And I need to say I'm the chair for human settlement. So to see social housing around the transport, I need to, to, to say thank you very much because it's one of the things that we need in this province. But the question it will be, why are you championing the social housing? Um, more than the adding the trains that are needed. And Chair, maybe if you can indulge me the last minute of saying, you know, I'm one of those members that have used trains to come to the office, have used the buses, and now I'm on the car. So I can write a story about the safety of the trains where you will get the tear gas inside the trains that just get to be thrown in. So when you hear a lot of questions about the security of the patients, I've seen so many people being stabbed and everything. So I'll appreciate if we can hear the response to that of what are the, the, the systems in place? Because also there's the, the, the criminality of the, all the cables that are being stolen, they need to be the security before anything else can be improved because you are going to replace a train and it's going to burn because of the criminality factor. Thank you, Chair. I'm sorry if I took more time. No, it's okay. Thank you, Honorable Maseku. Um, before I um, give Honorable Fundervesas an opportunity to ask his questions, um, I've been notified that um, Honourable Mvimbi experiencing connectivity problems and Honourable Kondlu is standing in on his behalf. So for the record, welcome Honourable Kondlu. Um, I hope you um, were able to follow um, the presentation and if you have any questions you'd like to ask, you're most welcome to do so. Honourable Van der Wesseisen, I pose your questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, firstly, I want to say thank you very much uh, to Prasa for the presentation, but also for your efforts to return the service uh, in the Western Cape. Um, the Western Cape, as you would know, is 
uh, absolutely reliant on 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 safe uh, rail transport for literally tens if not hundreds of thousands of of our people and your role in the economic recovery of the western cape cannot be underestimated it is huge and as honorable maseko has said you know a lot of us uh, in the past made use of your services and we've now been forced to use the roads and and the situation in that regard is 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 is, is really deteriorating uh, with bottlenecks, accidents, and all that 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 uh, uh, you know complicates matters. So thank you very much. Also, in terms of your property development, the densification next to railway stations, uh, if I put on my hat as a previous councillor many many moons ago, with the old policy of densification. And, and having people stay very close to our public transport nodes, I think uh, it, is, it is to be welcomed. Uh, but having said that, uh, I, I, I keep on reminding myself that your core function is the transport of passengers. And, and, and I'm also concerned in, in a sense that some of your energy and some of your abilities may now be concentrating on property development and not on the on the transport of of, of passengers, your your primary uh, purpose and goal. Just uh, a few quick questions. The first one is, uh, won't you just again give us the definition of a delayed train? Secondly, uh, when you were last here, some eight months and one day on the twenty second of June last year, you envisaged that the Mulder's Flay and or Strand lines would be returned within three months from that meeting. And now, uh, eight months later, it, it seems to me as if you're not even setting any deadlines for yourself in that regard. What What is the, 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 the plan or what is your timeline in terms of, of those parts of the Northern Line, please? Then secondly, uh, do you have, you've said that you need certain budgets and certain funding, uh, especially for the property developments, etc. But do you have the budget to effect the maintenance, repairs, and the, and the replacement of of stolen equipment, or you know what is what is the main causes of the delays in in this regard? And and here I'm talking about the lines, such as the Northern lines, the Stellenbosch, Strand, Mulder's Flay Strand lines. That, that do not require relocation of people, et, et, et cetera. And can you perhaps just uh, share some of your best practices to combat uh, future vandalism? Because obviously we cannot just uh, you know, replace the cable in the same way that it was there initially when it was stolen, et cetera. Then uh, during our last engagement, you made a lot about the construction of the fences or walls along the central line. And it was my impression that you were about to go on, uh, out on a tender within days of, of that meeting. And that the design of the wall, of, uh, plus the additional safety equipment, cameras, etc., uh, was, was, you know, pretty finalized at, the, at that point in time. Uh, what is the progress? And and we've just seen too often that when people have been relocated to open up land, that uh, unless you protect that land vigorously, that illegal occupants, again, you know, take up that, that, that land. So uh, can you assure us that once these people have been relocated, that you will have the systems in place to to preserve that land for the railway line again. My next question, you are running at about one third of your previous services. Uh, now, I'm concerned that in the case of, of the South African Airways, they had a bloated staff establishment. So my question is, to what extent have you been able to adjust your staff and also, you know, uh, curb your staff numbers in line with the, you know, services or the contraction in your services. Second last, have you experienced any pushback from other public transport operators that have been filling the void left by the cancellation of passenger rail transport? What I'm fearing is that the moment you return your trains to certain lines, that the taxi operators that have currently been 
uh, taking over that very, very essential service that they will find themselves without passengers and that maybe there may be some pushback and even some sabotage and vandalism as we've seen in the past uh, happening. Uh, please, if you could comment on that. And then lastly, just a comment on slide 23. I see the, the province indicated for Goodwood is KZN. Now, I don't know if you, you, that's your way of trying to get some money to the Western Cape uh, that's initially been allocated to KZN, but uh, I, I presume that you may want to just correct that uh, slide 23. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Van der Beer. I think there are quite a few questions and I'm going to allow um, Prasa to respond to those questions and then I will open a, a second round for questions. Um, thank you. Prasa, Mr. Mpelu, you could... Honourable Chair, Honourable Can you hear me, Honourable Chair? Yes, okay. yes, loud and clear, thank you. I, I will start and then I'll get my, my team to fill in with some uh, in other areas. But let me start with the one that, that's appearing uh, uh, from both the, the Honourable Members, Maseko and Panorvesa on the, the issue of championing uh, social housing. So we've got two mandates. One, one is running the service and the other one is, is, is generating revenue from the assets we own. Uh, so, so we're doing that because it assists us with that. But we've also seen that where we've got active properties and occupation of properties closer to the rail reserves, the communities and that activity protects the infrastructure and the, and the, and the rail services. So, the more we develop this closer to the rail, the, the, the inherently we then protect, the, we help protect the, the infrastructure closer to those developments. I, I, I pick up a, a, a trend that we've seen out in Pretoria where there is a, a mall closer to a station. And when all this vandalism carried on during lockdown, because that was closer to, to a mall, the security within the mall uh, also helped with securing the station closer to the mall. So the more of these developments that we have closer to the rail reserves, it helps as well with the ownership and closeness to the infrastructure and it protects that. But over and above that, as a second mandate, we then re generate revenue to be able to run and operate and sustain the entity as compared to sucking from the fiscals directly. So I needed to address that. It's not, it's not necessarily moving away from the focus of running the trains, but it's a secondary mandate that comes from, from owning the, the, this infrastructure and the rail reserves as well, and we help with that with that part. Impact from other uh, transport entities like like taxi taxis and, and that, we have not seen it directly. We, we, we can't touch and feel it at that, but it remains a risk in that we are fighting for the same commuters. More so that we we offering a cheaper a cheaper service as compared to what they offer, so it still remains a risk. But our integrated uh, security plan is meant to cover that as well. So we're beefing up on the security to make sure that we cover that. Part of that is the intelligence and gathering the intelligence around around you know the messaging and the behavior around the other entities including the vandalists and, and the thieves and the syndicates as well so we should be able to pick up the vibes around that so that we can then respond and react accordingly on the on that component um the technology part we we made a consortium a a a a, a, a a decision when we started with the integrity with the integrated uh, security plan honorable chair in that we needed to start with the boots on the ground and then come up with the security or rather security technology platforms to then complement the people. When we looked at some of the technologies that we were looking at earlier on, it wouldn't make sense putting the, the, the cameras and the drones first before we put in the people that should respond or react or even operate those technologies. So we started with the boots on the ground we're now going to follow with the technology in the next year. Do we have money to do that or to facilitate that? Yes, it's in the budget at the moment to facilitate and cover those areas. The wall progress itself. So again, a conscious decision on the walling. Our 
start on the, the designs are done, yes. But our start, when we look at the amount of money that we needed to spend on just one corridor in the Western Cape, Central Line was going to cost us around 4.4 billion on its own. We needed to look at this and say, do we spend 4.4 billion only on the wall in one corridor or do we distribute it across all the strategic infrastructure? So the decision we came up with was that we're going to start with protecting the, the, the critical parts of our infrastructure and buildings. So your stations and your relay rooms are the ones that we're going to cocoon first so that we protect that and the substations as well. Then we will, as, and as time goes on and we start stabilizing from a revenue collection point of view and the fiscals are being able to support that, we can start covering the, the entire rail reserve. But as a start, we're looking at covering only the, the critical parts and the critical parts of the infrastructure and the buildings associated with that. And more so the substations, the, ele the electrical uh, components and the signal signaling components there all. Um, what are the delays? Honorable Fan of uh, the, the delays where there are no encroachments. The delays are coming from vandalism. So we signal uh, the, the, the Northern Line through Goodwood. It got vandalized. Now we're looking at re-signaling what we had put put down. We ran a new OHTE on the. It got vandalized. Now we're looking at repairing that. So what are we doing to respond to that? We've now entered into into a contract with the the, the OEMs or the original equipment manufacturers of this equipment to make sure that we've got enough space to go and replace as these things are get attacked or or or, or vandalized. So that's what we've done in the Western Cape. It's signed. It's going to help us get the Goodwood uh, uh, line, Northern line uh, through Goodwood up and running. So that is the approach on that one. We're using the space and the materials that we have through this contract, through this contract to repair and respond to that quickly. Maybe let me leave, let me leave the rest to, for my team to, to, to then explain further. Uh, Kaparo, Honorable Maseko asked around the parcel of land, uh, the visibility of security and the, and the rail enforcement unit, if you can get to that. Yeah, I, I think, uh, um, uh, thanks, Honorable Maseko. I think the issue around visibility uh, of security, it also talked to the the integrated security plan uh, that we, 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 we're having. I think you'll recall that uh, 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 what you call we, we, we have uh, went out as press and we have employed about 3,100 additional security into the system. Um, um, uh, the Western Cape uh, process is just being completed now because we also have to, uh, to, 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 to bring security, uh, additional security into, into our trains, um, into our system. I think that that process is, 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 uh, is, is, is running currently. Um, um, uh, and, 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 and we should be able to get that, uh, uh, that completed in this current financial year. But I think on the running trains, what we have done, we have uh, re looked at the deployment of our security. We, we are looking at the, uh, uh, the uh, what you call it, where we are currently running uh, to be able to, uh, to especially in the, in, the, in the Simon's Town line, where we're running trains, to bring security into the trains. Uh, in fact, when, when we went to RSR, it's also one of the conditions to show that says we must have marshals on the station so we can improve visibility. So the marshal is one thing that the, what you call it, what we're going to uh, to look at in the in the Western Cape. So there is there is the security plan. I'm not sure about the numbers as yet, uh, I think if Alex was in the meeting, we could have confirmed the numbers. The numbers. But there is a recruitment process uh, to bring additional uh, security bodies in into 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 the Western Cape. Uh, for the purpose of rolling out the uh, what you call the the new trains, but as well as the existing trains where we're running, but where we are going to do the work in the central line uh, to uh, for the for, for the work that we'll be doing. But I'm not, not sure I could indicate the number now, but I don't want to mislead honourable members. We can always confirm what is the number that we are busy recruiting, when that is going to come in place, and then uh, and and that, that kind of thing, we can be able to confirm that. I just don't want to mislead them for now. Okay. Yeah. Alex, Alexio is is in the meeting. Alex, can you cover that uh, quickly? Uh, good afternoon, honourable chair, um, ME, uh, honourable MEC um, colleagues from the Western Cape, as well as our members. I'd like just to add um, 
into that, that just in the purpose of understanding um, corporate security, um, myself um, has done a restructuring of deployment within uh, the Western Cape. Um, the habits previously were being monitored by syndications. So what we've done is, is we've reignited the joint operations. Um, internally, we've done a restructure of deployments, which is including area armed response. So we've decentralized the area armed response into the um, uh, into the actual areas itself. Um, specific pressure has been put on um, during the months of January as well as February. Um, hence the successes in terms of the the uh, um, less amount of vandalism and theft and the less uh, obviously arrests that have been happening because we have been managing to penetrate the syndications. Um, over and above that, there's an intervention unit that is planned for the uh, central line specifically. This intervention uh, unit is um, exactly the same as how we've done it on the Mabu Pane line in Pretoria, um, whereby we are deploying um, specific armored vehicles as well as teams that is in joint operations in order to assist with the specific evictions. That unit will be deployed um, at the end of March 2022. In terms of onboard uh, uh, train uh, security, I can report that specifically on the trains that are in operation, for example, on the Southern Line currently, we do have onboard deployed security, both in uniform and undercover agents. Um, there's been a great reduction um, on onboard uh, uh, assaults and uh, necessary crime on board. And then last but not least, um, to defer back to our uh, acting group CEO, um, in terms of the technology packages, I'm happy to report back that not only for the Western Cape, but nationally in Prasa, um, part of our phase two in terms of technology to bring in prevention is better than cure strategy. Um, there are five technology packs that will be released um, in the first week of March, uh, uh, where companies are invited um, to uh, tender for these specific packages. Um, and 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 I'd like to leave it at there. Um, thank you, Chair. So, Honourable Chair, I, I hope we've covered some of the the, 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 the questions that between Honourable Maseko and Honourable Van Vesa has been raised. But the one last one that I just picked up that we've not covered is the 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 the, the question from Honourable Van Vesa and around what have we done around the staff alignment versus the third of, of, of the service we're running, uh, uh, if I'm to put it that way or summarize it that way. So we, we're look, busy looking at uh, our structure, we're looking at the operating model, we, we're we considering a rationalization there. But we also need to consider the fact that uh, as we, yes, we may be down in terms of uh, uh, the third of the service at the moment, but when we recover, we shouldn't run a risk of, of, of losing that debt institutional memory and going back to try and find people to come run this service. So we are trying to maintain a balance there. But all in all, we do realize that at some point we need to rationalize this entity. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Um, uh, Honorable Maseku and Honorable Van der Weesen, do you have follow-ups? I recognize Honorable Maseku. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, I just want to find out, that I, I wonder if I missed the question, my question of the railway enforcement. I just wanted to find out that is it going to, will it be intro, reintroduced or it's, it's, it's not going to happen anymore? And or maybe also if Minister um, Michelle also can indicate um, if maybe he has the information because I didn't, um, I don't think Prasa have responded to me on that one. And another one, Chair, is the issue of the the pace of um, the services as they are being upgraded or as they are being uh, revived. I think the revived revived is the right word because 
we know that the influx of people in Western Cape per year is about more than 100,000, of which most of them, they will use the public transport, of which is either it will be the road or the trains. And they're affordable, like um, the, 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 the group CEO saying, it will be the trains. Now, if the pace is as the, 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 we are going to have a snail pace, we are going to have a ripple effect of there's going to be one way or another the uprising of our communities because they won't be able to go within the, the city as they look for work or as they come to it. So I'm a little bit worried of the pace and the dates of implementation or the increasing of the the trains on the lines, because if you check the numbers of the trains in when I was using the trains 2014, 20, 2015, 16, and what do we have now? Because I was staying in, in, in Somerset West, it, they are reduced big time. And uh, those trains always, they were full. I mean, we will have to struggle to get a space. Now, if we are saying every year we have those numbers and still we are not at the space where we can say we are trying to be to be accommodative of those communities to be able to use that system. When are we going to say this? Because now you are working on a backlog of being able to transport our communities to come to the seat. When are we going to say now we have reached at least the 70 percent of the what we are planning to do to make sure that we can, the transport can be, or the prasa can be on a, on a, on a positive side with our communities. So that that is my concern. That it's like we are working backwards, then forward, then another one backwards. Now, if the security is not there, there's going to be vandalism that happens one way or another, and it's backwards again. We are going to have the communities are going to suffer again. So we, we, we need to look at that. And I'm saying we, because we are in government also, we need to assist where we can. We need to give you information where we can for you to improve. But where we see there is a lacking of the pace of that happening, we also have to come to you and say, man, we need to really increase the speed. I'm not saying 120 on gravel, but make sure that we get the, the right pace to make sure we react to the demand that is there within our communities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Ms. Seku. On what for the session, follow up? Yes, thank you, Chair. Chair, uh, I think my, my first and quickest question, what is the definition of a delayed train? Uh, and, and is the train once delayed, or if it arrives late at 10 or 12 stations, Will it be counted as one delay? Uh, if you could just perhaps help me with your definition there. Then the second one, I also didn't hear the response to the Miller's Flay or the Strand Lines, uh, linking on to what Honorable Maseku uh, has pleaded for. Uh, yes, indeed, those trains were packed uh, when they were still running. And, and I think we need to be honest. We need to be able to tell the municipality of Stellenbosch. We need to be able to tell the, the public you know, these trains will not be, be running this year, nor, ne nor next year, uh, or ever again, or we envisage to put them back into service in the year 2025. I think we also need to, to be able to communicate that to the staff that used to work at the stations along along uh, this line. So please, I think we need, we need some indication from you. And then lastly, Chair, in terms of, of, of the four Billion Berlin type wall. Uh, I, I accept that you've now moved away from that. Uh, eight months ago, that was uh, kind of you know presented to us as the silver bullet that would pre prevent illegal occupation, that would uh, you know assist with uh, fighting uh, vandalism, etc. But we need, we do all, we all know we need some form of fencing. Uh, even if it's a simple construction site now, nowadays, you need some fencing around that to protect your assets. So what are your plans in, in that regard? And fourthly, Che, uh, it, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence if you say some of the repairs that you've done 
have already uh, again been vandalized. Then, you know, uh, to, 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 to respond in the same way over and over again, and I've heard about the decentralized uh, security, etc., which I think is a great initiative. Uh, it absolutely makes sense. But what will be done differently to ensure that taxpayers' money is not again and again and again spent on replacing infrastructure, and before the trains have, uh, are able to utilize that infrastructure, it is again being vandalized. Surely, we must do something differently this time around. Please tell us, apart from decentralizing security, what are your plans in this regard? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable for the session. Um, uh, Mr. Pelo, uh, over to you. Okay, Honorable Chair, uh, maybe as I start again, I'm going to call on the team as as as, as we go. But uh, let me let me address the, the 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 question on the pace of recovery. And I acknowledge the fact that we, there's a delay in terms of that recovery. It's been slow, but the team has has uh, has now looked at the acceleration uh, process into that. And I think when I look at this province, it's probably going to recover a little a lot quicker. Uh, as compared to others on some of these things, bar central line, which has got its own its own issues, but the other the other areas are, are are probably going to come up a lot a lot quicker. But we also need to note, honourable chair and honourable master, for that it we we need to get the sequencing right, in that we need to put the service down first, run it a, a couple of times, and make sure that it's 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 running. Then we start improving the utilization and bring in the, the, the 12 units that we referred to of the new investment or the new trains come in. And as the, the signaling, which, which has got a lot of impact in terms of the safety and, and the permit that we run, improves as well. Uh, we then decrease the, the headway, which is the time between the trains. But it's a sequencing thing that we need to bring in. It's a, it's a service down on the ground first, and then we start improving the number of, sort of train sets that we run on the line. But our biggest delay at the moment, it takes us longer to put signaling back in, 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 in its order. That's, a, that's been the, the case. It's, it's quicker to, for us to put the electrical components down, but the two biggest components, signaling and the rail itself, when the rail has been destroyed and the signaling has been destroyed, we've learned that it takes us longer to, to recover that. But where we've got that recovered, we want to put the, 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 the train, run it a couple of months and then starting decreasing the headway so that, or rather increasing the number of train sets so we can service a lot more people. Kaparo, you want to cover the other areas? Yeah, I think there's a question that talks to the other corridors in the northern line uh, from honorable other station that talks to whether what are the uh, whether we should be able to be telling the communities in the Stellenbosch that these trains are not coming I must say the way in which the program has been running was really to recover the uh, the, the train the, the corridor that are not running uh, if you look at the at the at the lines mama's berry for example we are currently running uh, off peak period, uh, morning and the afternoon peak. If you go to Melder's play, there is an extensive vandalism of the signaling as well as the OET equipment in that in that in that space. So uh, the team has indicated that the, obviously the, it's going to take longer to recover the uh, the Mama's Bay, the Melder's play uh, uh, line to Stellenbosch, um, and then that that looking at the in the new financial year, uh, probably towards the end of the of, of February. Uh, towards the, the end of, of January 2023. Now, if you look at the at the strand line, which is uh, we want to recover that strand line. Uh, I may not have indicated when I was talking earlier that the strand line uh, from Belleville, uh, Kells River to uh, to Strand, uh, we've got an OHT, uh, a significant vandalism OHT, only OHTE at, at the at the strand at the what do you call it at the uh, as the river itself. So the team is going to uh, to work on that. It's not started. It's going to be the work that we're looking at the October uh, to be able to bring that service back. So there are two. Those lines are and we're not forgotten about them. We want to recover them in this current financial year, but the the, the strand is going to uh, to come first. We look in October because the unlike Central that there's not uh, it's only OT work there, 
and the and the and the melde stress tell them was we look at jalaba 2023 so those are the those are the two but i also maybe want to um honor myself was thinking about at what point will we say we're actually running a decent service in the western cape i think it's important to also that at some point when we're running uh, uh the 115 trains when you have 115 trains and uh, we could say we're running a decent service for the western cape uh we we deteriorated until uh, we got to 85 trains and we said even at 85 at least 85 number of trains in the whole region it's a it's a acceptable train at that time but we currently now sitting at the uh, run 23 trains and uh, we have uh, uh, 30 new 30 trains that are ready to run we run 23 we also have those 12 uh, emus so we we actually ramping up towards getting to uh, 85 as a first bench uh, benchmark and then ramping up to 115 where we can be able to say at that point i mean we may not have the day to say we'll get to 85 by this time we'll get to 115 by this time but i think uh, when the we can always uh, get the plan and, and 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 put the days next to next to this thing thanks the definition of a delay, delay. the the definition yeah. of a delay uh, 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 there was a question around the definition delay it's a, it's a quick one honorable chair um uh, we we are measuring a delay uh, from uh, from start of a, of a service to the end of service if it's less than five minutes if it's more than five minutes that is considered to be a delay but anything between uh, zero and and five minutes, uh, that train is on is on time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Question, um, on, on on security, honourable chair. Um, um, that's the question from honourable van der Westen. On security, what are we doing differently uh, that will make sure that we not we not compromising the fiscus and just keep on on injecting fiscus. Alexio, do you want to cover that quickly? Yes, thank you, uh, Acting Group C, uh, and uh, thank you, Chair. In terms of the first question uh, with the uh, joint operations with the city, um, when joining PRASA um, in June of 2021, an analysis was done not only in the Western Cape, but in Prasa in general, in terms of the security. Um, this uh, integrated security plan was looked at as well as certain adjustments to that plan in order to take control of what is the problem now. So point one was joint operations to reignite, which has been done um, and it's been paving some great successes. Part two was the decentralization as well as adding armed responses into areas and undercover operations in order to find and fight syndications. Last but not least was um, uh, looking at the memorandum of understanding between Prasa and the city. I know currently there are uh, talks in the background um, that are currently uh, uh, bearing certain fruits. However, the issues that I had found uh, within this um, a joint operation was issues of funding. Um, so it stopped um, two years ago. But what I can uh, uh, um, confirm is, is that there is a process that's happening in the background in order to revive that um, uh, specifically. So there's three elements of, of, of um, intervention that has been happening in and around the Western Cape, specifically with the redeployments the decentralization of the armed response units, as well as the intervention unit, uh, uh, which will be deployed at the end of March. Um, thank you, uh, Chair. <clears throat> thank you, um, Mr. Miller and uh, Mr. Papandopoulos. Uh, colleagues, um, the meeting is scheduled for um, to end at uh, four, so, um, are there any other questions members would like to ask? Um, um, if it's, uh, I don't know, Mr. Echo, um, if, if, if it relates to unsatisfactory responses to your question, um, you may ask him now quickly. I don't know, Echo, keep it brief, please, colleagues. Chairperson, I'm, I'm just asking, just a quick one. Is the railway um, enforcement 
going to be reintroduced or not? And what are the reasons? Is Minister Michel going to respond to that if he knows or Prasa will respond if they know that? Because I've been asking it as the first question. I haven't heard and I apologize if it was responded to and I didn't hear. And the second one, Chair, it will be when people they steal the cable, what do they do with it? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, sub A. Is there for copper or is just the wire? So I'm so if I can be upgraded to grade one, I'll appreciate that from sub A. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And from my side. Person? Yes, can I can I just uh, again reiterate that you know Prasa and the railway service is so important to us in the Western Cape, and I want to pledge our support to Prasa. Uh, I believe that you 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 indicated that you're already getting excellent cooperation from the city of Cape Town when it comes to you know the the land use applications etc. But I would like to invite Prasa here uh, through you, Chair to express, you know, uh, and, and communicate with us, should they at any stage believe that we from the Western Cape Provincial Parliament can assist uh, them to, to recover the rail services. And, and again, thank you very much for what you are doing. Uh, 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 you know, I know you are also the victims, as many other South Africans, of criminality. And, and, uh, and for that, we, we, we really would like to express our, you know, uh, understanding, and and uh, and and we we really want to help and work as partners to assist with this important function. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Honourable Um I think that I just want to ask a question or two just to um, wrap up this. Um, I'm not going to go through all the questions I wanted to ask, um, but. Um, the one relates to phase two at the uh, um, captain's clip Philippi corridor and on a site visit uh, two years ago. Um, that at that stage uh, the corridor was completely decimated in, as far as vandalism is concerned, and um, talks of the um, the boundary wall was also very prevalent in our engagement at that stage. Um, so um, I was a bit concerned if, if I looked at the, um, the the date for that service to become online again at the end of the year and with all of those activities that needed to take place, whether it is um, attainable, but um, with the wall out of the way now, possibly it will, will happen. The other question I'd like to ask is uh, with regard to Phase 1C. And it was stated that um, all the role players have uh, signed the implementation protocol except the city of Cape Town. Uh, and um, yet further down the presentation, it was stated that um, there's optimism that the July deadline will be met and that uh, IP as well as the service level agreement will be signed by Monday, which is in a couple of days time, um, with um, the city of Cape Town not having signed the IP yet. Uh, what were the, the main concerns for not um, signing this IP and what impact will it have uh, with regard to the relocation of um, the uh, settlements um, that uh, need to be relocated. And um, will they uh, will they be relocated uh, to a TRA site? Uh, and will the um, provision be made for permanent um, sort of stop structures or uh, whatever for those people that's going to be relocated. And with the position of land for such relocation, who, who's going to um, bear the cost of, of such relocation? Um, would it be HDA? Would it be um, the city of Cape Town? Would it be Prasa? Um, maybe a uh, 
I missed that one. And then lastly, just as uh, a, a, a concluding remark, is that the development of the Cape Town Station, um, and, and one of my colleagues asked about the pushback from um, the taxi operators. Um, we know that they are major um, player uh, on, at the Cape Town station deck. Were there any engagement with them and what will happen? Will there be a relocation of um, that sort of um, facility that uh, is being utilized by the taxi operators? Um, because it could possibly have some sort of um, sort of unintended consequences for for commuters, and then finally, uh, uh, when when trains are cancelled, um, it's often and, and I understand the reasons um, that were given for the cancellation. Um, are these cancellations communicated to the commuters? Do they know, or do they simply just um, you know um, just be there and then the train simply just don't pitch up and then they're late for work and it has other implications for them. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pedro. Honorable Chair, um, again, let me let me cover a few of these areas and then I'll bring I'll bring um, uh, my team to, to to fill in. On the issue of of the rail enforcement unit, um, Honorable Maseko. I think uh, Alexio had alluded to the fact that uh, it was cancelled due to budget issues, but we are busy re-engaging with the, with the new memorandum of understanding to, to, to reignite that, basically. Uh, the, the reason for cancellation, as I picked up Honorable Maseko, was that there they, they were budget issues. We, we're busy re-looking at that. It's not that we also out of the woodworks from a budget point of view, so we do need to re to, to, to also relook at that as well ourselves. But we are reviewing that, uh, which means we are re-looking re at that and to bring it back because it was effective. Um, Honorable Chair, we, without missing this, because I, I may miss this, I also want to recognize and acknowledge the presence of one of our board of directors, a member of our board of directors, uh, Madam uh, Nidim Pierre who's our chair of our ARC uh, in the absence of, of our chairperson, I think. We're also expecting um, Director Temba Zulu, who's a sec seconded from the, the National Treasury as well as part of our board of, of control as well. So I didn't want to miss that, uh, Honorable Chair. Can I, can I then leave the rest to, to, to Kabaro? And, and Honorable Maseko, I'm hoping I'm, I've answered that on the on the rail enforcement unit, that we, we're, not, we're not missing it, we're not dumping it either. We are busy reviewing, but obviously bar the, 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 the budget allocation on that one. Kaparo. Thanks, thanks. Sir. Just, just a moment, a quick uh, intervention. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate the response, but if maybe Ms. Dampilo can expatiate because they do, we talked about the private security. So are you going to double um, allocate for the railway enforcement and the security. That's all from me, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, uh, Ms. Sampelo, uh, for the interruption. Um, uh, you, 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 your team, and uh, yourself, may proceed. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll I think the, the question that says uh, the city, the the IP being at the city, what impact will that have on the on the July deadline? I must also say that the, it's not that the city has delayed the signing of the IP. Um, the IP itself was in circulation. Uh, it has just been signed at the province and now it has not moved to the city. So it's, it's there just now. I think there are two broad um, uh, um, expectations in the IP uh, that we request in the city or that the city will play a role. One is that the, the city must provide basic services on this identified land that is going to uh, to be used for relocation. I think that's, that's, that's quite important. We have been in discussion with the city. They are aware of the, of the responsibility in relation to uh, this IP requirement. The second thing was the, really that the, the city 
uh, must expedite processes in order to meet the deadline. Uh, I think it's also an important uh, uh, IP uh, uh, node requirement for that. So um, if, if the city sign, um, uh, obviously uh, the process to expedite approval for us to access the land, uh, that, that process will still be expired at the city and, and we, are, we are confident that will certainly be uh, uh, meet the deadline. We, we have asked that the, uh, that process should not be longer than two months, the entire process. Um, obviously, um, if we signed uh, now, we're looking at the two months uh, uh, to complete the, uh, the process that the city has to go through uh, for the purpose of, uh, of approvals of the, of the process. So that, that we see that uh, as something that is going to, uh, that could still be met. Uh, but but it's not like the city will be seeing the IP requirement for the first time, Honorable Chair. Uh, they've been part of the process of its development, so I'm sure they are familiar with that, uh, with those, those obligations. The second thing was really around the information for delays and cancellation. Um, uh, do we inform the customers uh, upfront when the trains are going to be delayed? I must say, Chair, I think we've been, uh, we also have done a study within PRASA uh, that the 90 uh, percent of our commuters are actually on social media so we are very active in terms of announcement on social media around delays and cancellation we are also making announcement on the radios um, uh, local radios uh, when we are going to experience delays uh, so that upfront uh, uh, those that have access to some of this media uh, they'll be able to get that kind of um, information uh, but even on the stations uh, we have our our communications platform uh, we make announcement on the stations if the train is going to be delayed um, and we are making those kind of announcements so broadly uh, we, we we are trying by all means to access the commuters uh, so that they're able to make informed decisions when the trains are are late for that purpose thanks okay nice. i think on the follow-up from honorable maseko i think uh, her concern around the, the, the presence of a rail enforcement unit, uh, does, what does it mean and what is the alignment with us going into the private security? We do need force multiply. We need that. At the, at the time when we, we, were, we were running a better security, I think we, were, we had around uh, between 9,000 and 10,000 contingents. We lower than that, way lower than that. And we also now reacting and responding to a heavier syndicacy and vandalism at the moment. So we need we need a heavier force. And wherever it comes from, whether it's a it's a force multiply and a combination of private and, and rail enforcement unit, we need that at all cost up until we stabilize that and protect our assets. Um, I hope I've, I've covered that, uh, honorable chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Pelo. Just um, the last question that um, that was not covered is the financing of the land acquisition. Um, who, who's going to take responsibilities um, for that? As the city or yourself? Uh, Chair, um, the in the beginning, uh, Prasa uh, was prepared. Uh, to to finance the land uh, uh, the land acquisition, uh, we went to national treasury, and national treasury said it's not your mandate. Your mandate is to, is transport. Uh, this mandate falls within the department of human settlement. Um, so the the financing is really at the human settlement uh, department level. Um, it also I think in the in the in the IP uh, it, uh, it 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 also put that responsibility uh, in the department of human settlement. Of course, uh, we 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 are going to make a presentation uh, to uh, to national treasury so that uh, that that is funded, and we're looking at the uh, not earlier, not later than the 15th of March uh, to make sure that that application is made, and then we are able to go to transport uh, to national treasury Prasa and be able to request that that application be approved uh, as soon as we have completed these negotiations this week. But uh, it is Department of Human Settlement. That is going to fund the acquisition of land parcels. Thank you, Mr. Malieme. And lastly, Mr. Um, Pelo, is that um, with any engagement with the Taxi Association regarding the Ketan station development? Taxis. Yeah. Um, uh, Chair, the, the development at Cape Town station 
It's on the station uh, forecourt. Um, is the front part of station Adelaide Street. Uh, it has no impact on the on the top deck. Uh, so on the top deck, it will certainly not be affected at all. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Malema. Colleagues, uh, I think that we have exhausted the questions. Are there any questions uh, from members who have not um, previously posed any questions? And if members do have further questions, you may put it in writing and forward those questions to Mr. Kutsia. Um, allow me to um, thank you for your exhaustive uh, questions that you've posed to get clarity on um, the matters that impact on the mobility of our, our people um, in the Western Cape. And uh, allow me to thank uh, Prasa, uh, who's always been sort of available to us to have these engagements with them and keeping us abreast um, in terms of what happens um, along the re get rehabilitation of our railway infrastructure. Um, the, the plans that were presented there look, looks very exciting and um, if um, it can be implemented with the uh, um, proposed timelines, in the short term, it will make a big difference in the lives of our, our people in the Western Cape. But uh, I think I'm looking forward to um, observe the implementation of the IP as well as the service level agreement. And furthermore, um, we hope that we will have a similar engagement with you um, sometime after July um to get a sense of whether we have met at least some of the deadlines by then but mr pelo and your team thank you so much for um indulging us and um responding to the questions of our members we i want to echo the sentiments expressed by my colleague um on wolf and the um we are very grateful and we will give all our support and cooperation to you um, to um, ensure that you could possibly, um, you know, implement the plans that you have for our people in the Western Cape. Um, thank you so much. And, um, and lastly, the Minister, if there's a, any closing remark that um, firstly, Mr. Mpele would like to make, and I'll give the minister the last um, word if he wish to say anything, and then um, the officials uh, may leave the meeting because we just have some admin matters that we want to conclude, um, and then it's the end of our meeting. Uh, Mr. Mpele, sure. any closing remarks you'd like to make? Honorable Chair, to you and the, the honorable members, uh, to the department, uh, to the MEC, to HOD, uh, we want to thank you for your support in this journey. Uh, we're still looking forward to a lot more engagements and also keeping us on our toes and to our promises as well. But as we, as we start bearing fruits out of some of the activities that we have, we also want to invite you to come celebrate with us. Uh, we, we do know it's not going to be easy. Uh, we've been through some, some, some heavy beat, beating. And, and, and thank you for your support. Uh, and where we need your support going further in terms of resourcing, we're still going to come through so that the committee can then help us with supporting us. Uh, the implementation of uh, protocol as it is, it's a critical part. Uh, and where it requires a boost and it requires your intervention, we're going to do so. But we do enjoy the support of the MEC and the HOD. Uh, and I want to thank you again for that. The team is busy at work and it's encouraged by your support as well. Uh, thank you again on that. Thank you, Mr. Mpele, and um, all the best for yourself um, and your team. Uh, Minister Mitchell, uh, any closing remarks you'd like to make? 
Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much to the committee uh, for this opportunity uh, to engage today. And thank you very much to the leadership of PRASA. Uh, Chair, yes, um, just um, I, th I think PRASA alluded to it. Um, we as the department and um, myself, uh, we are committed to get the central line up and running as soon as possible um, in the interest of the citizens that we serve, but also to ensure that we, we uh, allow economic uh, gr economic opportunities to flourish and, and whether we like it or not, the, the rail or the dysfunction of the rail system and service currently is hindering that process. Um, so from my side and the department side, we have committed to do whatever is in our power uh, to try and see how quickly we can restore the service back, um, back, back um, online as soon as possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Minister. Um, the officials and the minister, you may um, leave the meeting and um, um, the members and support staff will remain behind just to conclude some um, important resolutions and other committee um, um, responsibilities. Thank you and have a lovely evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. OK, thank you. OK, thank you, colleagues. Um, right, um, resolutions. Um, any specific resolutions that you'd like us to, um, you know, adopt so that we could? Um, Honorable Seku? Sure, I think Ignacio? The first resolution it will be the 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 one that uh, the group CEO was saying that they will uh, invite us also as they continue with the journey of trying to get that um, railway lines operating. We will have to see what is it that they are implementing, and maybe the second one it will be the plans of the law enforcement. If we can have the information of um, hearing what is it in place and then how is it going to work together with a, I don't know if it's possible, with a private company, the double up system while they say they don't have enough budget and that is saving them the money at the same time. So I don't know how to put it. Uh, maybe Johan can help, but I want to understand the business plan of the law the, the, the railway enforcement versus the private security. Thank OK, you. thank you. Um, any other colleagues? Um, perhaps we should request a, a copy of the service level agreement and uh, IP um, so that we could acquaint ourselves with the content thereof, uh, Johan. Yeah. And, and, and no, sorry, no, Chair. Uh, I Sorry, Chair. Yeah, I, I think you put it nicely. So, Chair, I don't know, maybe I'll be out of order. Can I ask if it's possible to get the business business plan of the press? What is it that they are going to do on all those lines to revamp them so that when I do an oversight, I know what are the plans? So that it doesn't become as an ad hoc as they come. They say now we have 20 trains, now we have two, now the crime is this. No. So what they are anticipating to do, the business plan as a whole, and then it will be easier for me as we do the oversight. Does it make sense? I mean, as a new member, I don't have a clue. Or maybe if you have the document, um, Johan, Johan has got the information, I can get it from him. Um, with a um, recommendation, I think that we, we should invite the city of Cape Town um, to um, engage with them in terms of their role in um, uh, ensuring that um, the... Um, and I think we should invite them before July um, to give us a update in terms of their responsibilities, in terms of the service level agreement, because um, there's going to be quite some maracas if um, 
the illegal occupants on the river lines are going to be resettled. So um, we need to get clarity in terms of what will happen there. And then furthermore, we should um, perhaps, um, in terms of what the group, acting group CEO was saying, in terms of us being invited to that, um, to the opening of these new sort of uh, facilities, is that we should perhaps um, do a, a, a site visit, you know, particularly where um, the residents are going to be relocated. Um, once it is being known where to, they're going to be relocated and um, because I, I don't know, there's, there seems to be little sort of um, engagement with, uh, with, with, with the residents in terms of um, the relocation because they were just saying in two months they're going to, even if they have to do it by force, um, they have a unit similar to the Red Ants going to be brought in and so yeah, we can brace ourselves for some sort of serious conflict if if there is not buying from the community in terms of enforcing the court order. But anyway, colleagues, any other resolutions? I don't want to Old and new and? I'm saying, Chair, but they are also contradicting themselves because they're saying they're going to revive that line, whether they are there or they are not there. And yeah. after some few minutes, no, we are going to relocate them and then the social housing to, to accommodate them. And I I don't know, I'm still learning. Oh, yeah. yeah, anyway, colleagues, thanks uh, for that. Um, no further resolutions. If you have any other resolutions and you'd like to put it in writing, please do so, colleagues. You can send forward it to um, Johan and then um, it can be um, sort of considered by the committee um, at some stage later. Um, and that brings us to the end of this particular section. It's just one set of minutes that we need to adopt. And the only person present at that particular meeting were myself and on with the best season. So, Johan, will you kindly of flat the, the minutes of last year? I think it was a December. There you go, Chairperson. Is it visible? Um, can it just enlarge it a little? Uh, I've gone through the, 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 the minutes. Um, My name is... Okay. Could you just a Oh, yes. I was a second. Yes, I can cheap this. Sorry. It's real close. Uh, Alex, I can also... Um, I'm happy to, to, to support the adoption. There's a proposal for the basis that we adopt the minutes. There um, is a second to my minutes, Chair. <laughs> Acting Chairperson. <laughs> thank you, colleagues. Um, right, um, it's our first meeting for the year, and thank you, and uh, the new members, uh, Honorable August. Um, um, I hope <laughs> you uh, have um, enjoyed the, the content. I'm sure in the future you will make a significant contribution after you've orientated yourself with the issues that uh, this particular standing committee involves itself in. But I hope that you have had a, a welcoming experience. Great, right. thank, thank you colleagues and that. Um, allow me to thank Johan and Mpundu and the IT staff and Johan from Merlin. Uh, thank you colleagues for your um, support and organization in the background. It is always appreciated and um, we, um, we will see each other again. Um, thank you, have a lovely evening. The meeting is adjourned. Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes. Are, uh, you moving, are you moving towards N1? I am joining you tomorrow morning. Okay, sure. I've arranged with Lemise. Thank you. Okay, Bye. thank you.